Hey everyone, I quickly want to demo the software that I wrote for the Alien Tech DP100 power supply that you can see here. Uh, it's a neat little benchtop power supply. Um, it's very portable. It's powered um, via USB-C power delivery as an input. Um, and it's it's all, all a nice thing, but it it really lacks great inputs because it is so tiny. Only has three buttons and then this uh, turn dial here. Uh, and, and setting up values on this is, is very tricky and you have to remember how it works and it, it's not great. So um, there is a software for this, but it's only available on Windows. It's partly in Chinese, not necessarily a pleasant experience, especially if you are in fact working on a MacBook or you're working on Linux, um, then that's not an option and you're kind of stuck with the tiny buttons. So luckily, uh, Scott Pes one here on YouTube, uh, you probably know him, um, showed a demo on the EV Block forum where he connected to the device using WebHID, which allows you to access USB or Bluetooth devices via your web browser, which is great. And he showed that you can in fact communicate to this device and, and, and set simple values. And since I'm not an electro engineer, but a web developer, by trade, um, I thought, well, I can take this idea and I can build a full blown interface um, that exposes all functions to your browser and you don't need to install software. You just go to a website, connect your device and ta-da, you can use all functions. You bring a laptop together with your power supply or you have it set up on your bench and then you can have all the benefits of a large computer, large screen um, and nicer inputs. And, and that's what we have here. So let's get started. First, we need to connect to the device. So we hit the connect button. You will see a small pop-up showing up at the top here and it will list uh, all your DP100 power supplies. The device list here is filtered. So no worries, you won't connect accidentally to the wrong device. Let's connect to ours. And then you see values coming in. First, you'll see uh, the input voltage and the output voltage here. Um, that's the input from the power delivery, 20 volts, and the max output is the maximum we can output through the terminals, which is obviously limited by our input voltage. Um, okay, let's get started. Um, we have a Raspberry Pi 5 connected here, expensive equipment. We don't want to blow it up. Let's set our output voltage to 5 volt. You can use the um, slider here, or you can find adjust it using the arrow key, so just type in any number that you want. Um, current, we just leave it as is, and let's turn on the device. And you see it's booting up, and you can see the uh, power curve here. You see the uh, current, uh, the voltage is, is pretty constant, as it should be, because it says constant voltage. And you see the current going up and down because the device is booting, and you have the power graph at the bottom that's obviously related to those two. And you see how it flatlines now. That's because the device is booted up and draws a pretty consistent amount of power. Here you now see the actual output values, like the five volts that we set. We see max values, same here. You see the current um, current output, which is uh, 300 milli, uh, 680 milliampere. And you also see the maximum, which was 960 milliamps. Um, down here at the bottom, you see the power output. We are um, currently drawing 3.3, 3.4 uh, watts. And um, the max power draw that we had was almost five watts um, during boot. Um, and below that, you see the energy output. Um, any of those min max values or the energy output can be reset using the reset button at the bottom right corner which will reset those values. Okay, and let's say you're, um, you have your device booted and you're, you wanna attach something to your breakout board. So I'm plugging into the positive terminal and I'm doing up. And that would have been a very expensive mistake. Luckily, the power supply detected an overcurrent and shut off, which is wonderful because this is an eight gigabyte Raspberry Pi 5 which is very expensive. And how that's done is pretty easy. You find the overpower protection down here in the interface, and I set it to a maximum uh, current output of one amp, even though here it's set up higher, 
but they work differently. Um, the current output here is to determine if it runs in constant voltage or constant current mode, uh, where the um, protection values down here just completely cut the power uh, and prevent anything from continuously drawing a certain amount of power, the components from overheating over time. Um, it's, a, it's a great way to protect your circuits and something that professional power supplies do. And you can now set it up pretty easily here and you don't have to run to the settings of the device and, and, and set it up um, um, with a dial and everything. It's very finicky. Um, if you run into an overcurrent uh, situation, you just hit the status button again, you go into the off status, and then you can turn it on again. And uh, our Raspberry Pi survived and is booting up normally, which is wonderful. The whole software is um, uh, available on GitHub. Um, I will link the website and um, also um, the GitHub repository in the description of the video. Um, feel free to leave me a message there if you're interested in new features or you want to contribute or you have anything else to say. Other than that, I hope it's going to be very helpful um, if you own this device or if you're thinking about getting one with the additional software like this. It can be a wonderful thing. Uh, I hope you really enjoy it and I hope you have a great day.